Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Restricted Republic. My name is Justice Knight. I can't thank you enough for being here. It is, however, with no pleasure, I am prepared to bring you the information you're about to have to consume. It is information that I had hoped in our republic's history we would never have to present. There are multiple storylines now unfolding between House bills, resolutions, and comments from even General Honoré that should paint a picture for you that needs to build awareness immediately. To all our military members, we are so sorry for what you're about to go through. That's not meant to be a hook or a capture. It's the truth. And I'm going to prove it to you through the bills, the verbiage, and things occurring within the U.S. military that no one could have ever expected to see. But unfortunately, they are now reality. Now, before I go any further, because I want to get this out of the way, but I do need a huge favor from you. I'd like to start by asking again, if you haven't been to Restricted Republic, that was created as a means to support our message, mine and Lisa Havens. I don't ask for donations here. We wanted to provide you something in return, something unheard of in media nowadays, which is unfiltered, uncensored news beholden to no one, no advertisers, no sponsors, only beholden to our audience. Again, that is restrictedrepublic.com. Right now, if you go there, I'm going to give you 14 days for free. And on top of that, $5 a month for the next 12 months. So you get a full encompassing vision of what's been created there and what news and information is truly supposed to sound like, unfiltered, uncensored, beholden to no one. By using discount code TRUMP right now at monthly checkout, take advantage of everything I just offered you. And also, if you haven't been over to Telegram, please search for Restricted Republic. I leave the link below in my description box also. Also, get over to Rumble and BitChute and Mayway and Codius. We can continue to go through the litany of platforms. You'll notice who I didn't mention, and that's for a very good reason. But now, without further ado, I want you to sit back. I want you to take a deep breath. Because the information that I'm going to present to you this is as factual as it gets. Be prepared. The definition of terrorism is people use violence and intimidation to achieve a political or religious objective. We've always worked those tests in the army I was in, in foreign countries. Now we have to look inward and that's going to cause some hard work by the Congress and the DOJ to make sure that we're actively working those people with terrorist intent before they show up at the Capitol, before they show up at the state Capitol. And they've got to change some rules. Now I'm going to stop it there for a moment. They have to change some rules. We have to stop them before. He's talking about what has been classed as domestic terrorism. Our concern has been the definition of that term. And we have searched far and wide to continue to see how they're going to define that term. When I show you an official U.S. document as to what's put into that term, it was, it was emotional for me because I didn't know if I should feel anger, sadness, shock, or awe. But I promise you, Again, I'm asking you, just bear with me while we move through this. Now, General Honoré is an extremely, in my opinion, partisan man. You see here, come on, folks, we have to stop being stuck on stupid. We can't permit Second Amendment rights at First Amendment protests. No, all our rights are continually preserved, General Honoré, and that is not your position to tell me what my rights are. That is the Constitution's position, and I take great issue with that. But I'm going to let you speak a little bit later. I just want to get through some information first about this article that came out. Pelosi's pick to lead Capitol Probe says police complicit and they helped the rioters. He's talking about the Capitol Police, roughly about 2,000 members. I'll go into this article a little bit further, knock myself out of the way. They had to help inside that force. They had help inside that force, he told digital show host Roland Martin. They were either that stupid or ignorant, or they complicit. I think they were complicit, he said on MSNBC last month. 
Once they all, all gets uncovered, there will be some complicit actions at the Capitol Police. This coming from General Honoré. He told Liberal radio host Joe Madison, by percent, 30 to 40 percent of line officers are Trumpsters. Fox News Tucker Carlson played some clips of Mr. Honoré's de- declarations Wednesday night and said, speaking of misinformation and conspiracy theories, there's no evidence for any of that. It's all made up. It's crazy. And there's truth behind that statement, because in the government document I'm going to read to you, they actually put a percentage to what was declared as white supremacist within the riot. And the figure is going to, again, shock you a bit. Senator Ron Johnson, Wisconsin Republican, tweeted General Honoré is an extremely partisan and should be the last person to head up an investigation of what happened at the Capitol on January 6th. Here's one of General Honoré's recommendations. Sunday check-in, wishing everyone a safe Mardi Gras. He did this for Super Bowl also. Remember to follow safety procedures. Wear a mask over your mouth and nose. Social distance. Wash and sanitize hands often. Stay home as often as possible. And get the jab ASAP. Please remember that the end of the impeachment procedure is not the end of dangers our nation faces. We must all remain vigilant. If you see something, hear something, or smell something... Do something. Take a picture or video, call 911, give first aid, or run like hell. His words, not mine. Now remembering, why do we say that he is very partisan? I've followed his a long time. Here's one tweet in particular. Jesus Christ, will someone, maybe Sean Hannity, explain to 45... Stop saying ignorant blank like more testing creates more blank cases. This is effing embarrassing for man with nuclear code saying stupid blank like this. Sad things we have few governors believing the same blank. This is the man who also declared that Hannity should be deplatformed because he speaks Russian. Just again, it's not hard to find partisan politics anywhere in Washington now, is it? Of course, he also went after Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. Down below, right now, Congresswoman, who had bragged about her desire to carry a weapon on Capitol Hill, is currently in a standoff with Capitol Police at the newly installed metal detectors outside the chamber door. She refused to disarm to go through the metal detectors, saying it was within her right to be armed. General Russell Honore at the bottom put her stupid blank on the no-fly list at Speaker Pelosi, which, of course, is the person who secured him to do the investigation. But let's go a slight step further. The change is we can't have demonstrators showing up at a state capitol with damn long guns. Your First Amendment right don't give you the right to carry long guns to a demonstration. And that is confusing the hell out of police and intimidating people. Remember, one of the objectives of a terrorist is to intimidate because we can't have it all. You can't have freedom to carry a long gun in a courthouse and at the same time go outside and protest. Now again, I want you to think about that statement. You can't have it all. You can't have all your freedoms. This is only involving the Capitol Police. We're about to get to the military. Do you disagree with General Russell Henry on that statement? I do. You, you have the right to bear arms. You have the right to peacefully assemble a.k.a. protest. So why can't you have it all? In a civil society, that's absolutely allowed. But these are the leaders who are now setting the rules. They're they're driving the discourse. And we're going to go further now. Just forewarn, I'm, I'm keeping myself very peaceful because inside I'm burning. I'm boiling over. And you're going to see why. Capital Attack Review, Task Force 1-6, never forget. Hmm, phrase that's very familiar. They're coining again, this is on General Russell Henry. This has to do with his Task Force 1-6. Competence, confidence, team, discipline, excellence. Definition, please. I've just been asking for a definition, that's all. Nothing more, nothing less. I found my definition, though. I did Just wait, it's almost there. Pentagon officials explain vetting of National Guard troops. You remember all the... The troops in Washington, D.C. having to be vetted out to assure that they there would be no incident at the inauguration or while they're out there in the Capitol, securing it down like a fortress. But that was just the beginning. We warned you at that point in time it wasn't going to stop there. It would more than likely trickle through the military. 
They know all about it. Pentagon report details military reach of supremacist groups. Oh, white. Everything we predicted is, is now coming into focus. Next article on HuffPost. New bill seeks to improve military's ability to s- keep out white nationalist enlistees. The legislation introduced by Peter Aguilar, and I'll show you, comes after some servicemen and veterans participated in the violent capital insurrection. There is the congressman who presented this legislation on his website. Again, United States Representative Pete Aguilar, California's 31st District. Aguilar introduces legislation to prevent white supremacists from infiltrating U.S. military. Now, what's very key in this, and I'm not going to read all of it because it coincides. This list right here coincides with the document I am going to present to you. It is the presentation of how this is to be vetted out. Let's go further. It's called Shielding Our Military from Extremist Act. It was introduced again by Thursday. I'm just tying this all together so you know all these documents are one in the same. It gets very difficult when you're walking through this. This title here, Capital Riot Prompts a Reckoning Over Extremist in the Ranks. This was on February 10th of 2021, published by NPR. In the article, it states, so far, military veterans account for about 15% of those criminally charged in the Capitol riot. So far, military veterans, veterans, okay, 15% of those criminally charged in the Capitol riot, according to an NPR analysis. Some rioters carried Marine Corps flags, others dressed as soldiers, while at least one member of the far right group, the Proud Boys, told an NPR reporter that he served two tours in Iraq with the 82nd Airborne Division. Historical data has shown a link between military experience and right-wing extremism. And military experience is a prized asset in extremist circles. Now, remember when I've told you we need a definition for how this is all being defined. Now, it's beginning to come into focus. Everything we warned is happening white supremacist and extremist, and that term is being used as a broad brush to paint many, many people. Of those, they even state on this qualified news source of the rioters, 15% were military veterans. You see the numbers starting to shrink beyond what they wanted you to initially believe. I'm going to shrink it a little bit further as we move forward in this broadcast. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin signs military stand-down memo to address extremism. This was on February 6th. Just so everybody knows, this has been ongoing within the military. I'm showing you all the documentation to prove that. Secretary of Defense Memorandum for Senior Pentagon Leadership, Defense Agency, and DOD Field Activity Directors stand down to address extremists in the ranks. They started to vet the active military to assure they understood the dangers of and understood the oath they took, which everyone who has served in the military very well understands their oath. And again, our apologies for what's about to happen because this isn't going to stop. It's actually going to accelerate. Right now, they're trying to shroud it in this banner. Remember these points coming off of Peter Aguilar's site. Aguilar introduces legislation to white supremacists for infiltrating U.S. military. Remember these points here, continuous coordination, collaboration, collaboration. I'm going to read them to you because they appear in this document also under Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Adam Smith. This was presented, and it's a multi-point document, 65 pages long. Report to Armed Services Committee on screening individuals who seek to enlist in the armed forces. This is the readiness screening for extremist and gang-related activities, and use the following resources of the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the Tattoo and Graffiti Identification Program, and National Gang Intelligence Center. But that's not all. Let's start with the preface of this document. The Defense Personnel and Security Research Center is committed to supporting its federal government partners in their mission to keep domestic extremists from using government resources, personnel, training, and capabilities for their own violent purposes. The human and monetary costs of domestic terrorism are high, which makes it all the more important to deny extremists access to federal resources. The Defense Personnel and Security Research Center supports the efforts to keep the federal workplace safe, secure, and out of the hands of those whose loyalty to the federal government is compromised by their commitment to extreme or violent ideology. That is the preface as they move forward into the document. And don't worry, there's not that many screenshots, but nonetheless, I have to round off your understanding of the Orwellian cryptic nature of the document itself. 
DOD is exploring the use of social media information in the conduct of background checks. However, more reviews and analysis are required before we'll be able to determine how and if we can integrate the information into the background check process. Hmm. So now the FBI is getting involved, curating electronic databases, defining business rules to reduce white noise and getting resources like supplementary data from social media. Hmm. I told you that social media history of yours was going to come back to haunt you. So they're going to leverage the FBI resources to enhance military screening and personnel security vetting. A combination of all the departments of We'll stop there for a moment. Despite a low number of cases in absolute terms, individuals with extremist affiliations and military experience are a concern to U.S. national security because of their proven ability. Remember now, 15% military veterans, okay, not active service, military veterans, military experience are a concern to U.S. national security because of their proven ability to execute high impact events. White supremacy or white nationalism groups claim to have both active duty service members and veterans as members. FBI 2008, they had to go back to. Members of these groups also claim ongoing attempts to join the U.S. military with the intention of acquiring combat and weapons training. I'd like to see proof of that. I I really would. I might change my opinion, but I don't think you're going to be able to provide me proof of that. I think you're, again, trying to use that broad brush against a lot, a lot of people. Membership of active duty U.S. military personnel and veterans is highly prized by DT groups for several reasons. Military members bring legitimacy to their group's militant cause, which enhances their ability to push their agenda and attract recruits. Hmm. We'll move forward as these get smaller. To the highly cryptic nature of this document, remember when we told you the danger was in the definition. The danger is in the definition of extremist, of domestic terrorist, of white supremacist. Well, they gave the definition now. Told you we'd find it. I waited and I watched and I read thousands of pages of the documents. And this is just the beginning of what I'm going to present to you. Just the beginning. The United States does not have a designation list for DT groups or entities. However, there are violent organized movements that fall under the DT umbrella, domestic terrorist umbrella. So, If you believe in any of these, remember, you thought it was all about white supremacist, militant groups, those who any of us would disagree with in the pure definition, but not in the warped definition. Do you believe in animal rights? You're a domestic terrorist. Well, according to this document, are you sometimes against the government, don't agree with what they're doing? You're a domestic terrorist. Racial, ethnic. I still don't know what that means. But you're a domestic terrorist. We'll move forward a step further. Do you believe in environmental rights? You're a domestic terrorist. Oh my goodness, did you see what just happened there? They just crossed over the other side of the aisle, didn't they? Oh, that other warning I gave you that this isn't one side or the other. Oh no, this is all encompassing. If you don't agree with abortion, you are a domestic terrorist. I just want that to soak in for a moment. We we work diligently to find this. This is within the same document, the same document that has the process to make sure we're vetting properly those coming inbound in the military. But within those documents is always the evil, the twisting of terms. Because now you know And as I warned you, what would be deemed a domestic terrorist is by far wider a definition than they want you to realize. Remembering they're vetting out military, they're taking control of how the military operates and who's within that military to operate it. They're purifying, they're vetting. Now just think for a second now of the implications of that. Why? Why do they want to probe not only the military, but the Capitol Police? They want subpoena power. Pelosi says commission probing Capitol riot must have subpoena power. We'll go a step further. Remember Democrats, counterterrorism policy. I told you about this counterterrorism policy. Is the real terror, and it absolutely is. 
Just look at some of the words they're using. Again, how broad is this definition getting? What is it encompassing? Now, Capitol Police. Soon it will be local police. It's going into all branches of military. They're expanding and expanding and expanding this sphere of influence, control, so that they can control the mechanism. And once they have total control of the mechanism, there you go. There you go. The proverbial light just went on, didn't it? I know. It's chilling. they are documents. You can attempt to call this broadcast anything you want. I am using their documents. In a subsequent interview with NPR, Mr. Gunnar made similar points saying that he's not concerned, that he's concerned, sorry, not only about a small group of active extremists, but also the larger group from which they might draw tactic support. Broad brush. I told you here. Monster article here. Back to this NPR article. He suggests a program in which the government must isolate and alienate committed insurgents from the population. And while he doesn't suggest the U.S. citizens are equivalent of Iraqi or Afghan insurgents, he does point to U.S. experiences abroad as providing valuable lessons. Though some may be inclined to agree with him, his ideas are dangerous. His interpretation of the threat of terrorism in the U.S. is patently false, and the cure, he suggests, would be far worse than the disease it's meant to treat. And by the way, I digress for one moment. This was on the Washington Times. I did not mean to say NPR. This is the Democrats' counterterrorism policy is real terror. Take, for example, some prior examples of when you expand the sphere of control a little bit too far. For example, the never-ending war on drugs. The U.S. government seeks to destroy external enemies like South American drug cartels, but also internal enemies within the drug trade. U.S. citizens. But dealers of illicit drugs don't have brick-and-mortar businesses, and the drug users don't advertise their habits. So what's the government done? They've turned the tools of war they've used abroad inward in an effort to find these enemies. And what has that led to? That's how we've gotten aggressive police tactics like no-knock raids, SWAT teams, modeled explicitly after elite units in Vietnam, are used tens of thousands of times a year, more than 100 times every day. The result? Innocent people have their property damaged or their children traumatized or permanently injured. Others have been killed, and all this happened with virtual impunity for law enforcement. This is what happens when you expand the sphere of influence. The war on terror brought similar tools home, including a cadre of new surveillance techniques. But instead of ferreting out unknown terrorists, these tactics have instead been used by law enforcement for any number of mundane reasons. Take, for instance, stingrays, devices that gather data like location and other personal identifiers from cell phones. This technology, originally intended for use in catching terrorists, is now being used by local law enforcement with little transparency or oversight. And while we should also be concerned about the government using tools of war against its own citizens, we should also consider that those most likely to be abused with these tools are communities of color. Yeah, I know, that's the little bit they don't tell you. It's why we at Restricted Republics work so very hard to make sure everyone understands that we don't just preserve the rights of one side of the aisle. And I can't go to tell you how important it is before I finish this. That's an important topic that nobody seems to understand because they want to paint everybody in conservative media, if you want to call it, in a corner. They only care about one side. And nothing could be further from the truth. We're actually the ones who want to preserve the freedoms of all sides. But you see, freedom's a tricky thing, isn't it? In this slippery slope of people trying to consume control, driven by hate. And I'm going to show you how driven by hate they are. And it's a recent maneuver Lisa's going to cover, I think, in more depth later. But let's go back one more second here. The best surveillance technologies consistently misidentified black and brown faces. These new strategies would be no different. As opposed to combating far-right domestic extremism, these strategies would undoubtedly see more use intimidating BLM protesters and those fighting for things like police reform. You see, it does slide across both sides of the aisle, doesn't it? Just as we told you it would. But when you're consumed by hate, you don't care. You put bills through like H.R. 484. In case you don't know, this is the there is no glory for hate. Not a building statue or even a park bench shall stand. This is the Erasing Donald Trump Act. Once and for all. 
it will produce federal funds, uh, I'm sorry, prohibit the use of federal funds for symbols, monuments, structures, buildings, or public lands. I'm going to go a little bit further. It will stop pension, staff, office travel expenses, or burial at the Arlington National Cemetery for any president who was impeached twice, a.k.a. President Trump. When you are fueled by hate, this is what happens. We don't have to go through the archaic sections of the no glory for hate because I just read them to you. The restriction of any federal funds commemorating certain former presidents that would stop his library more than likely. Driven by hate. To our dear and adored and loved service members and your families, your service we could never thank you enough for. Your sacrifice is beyond, it appears, the comprehension of those who are meant to represent we the people. And that's simply not right. The interest in what you have done for this great republic, we could never, never give you enough appreciation and thanks. And we are sorry for what this current administration is doing. It is unacceptable. It is not okay. It is egregious. It is rights violating. And it is not what this great United States was ever meant to stand for. And we will continue to stand against it, presenting, of course, in the format we seem to be so successful with. So that you, our military service members, to you, our restricted Republic family, can consume and understand so you can prepare and start to steer future discourse ourselves. It was a lack of education to put us here. A lack of proactive reaction to put us here. It was a thought that things would simply go back to normal. And they won't. We have a government spiraling out of control. Oh, there we go. Now I'm on the list. How dare I even question any authority? It's simply not allowed. When our leaders are as juvenile, as dangerous and deceptive as the lady I'm about to play for you. To our service members, again, you have our most sincere apologies. We will be fighting for you. We will be educating. We will be reporting on. And we will not cease and desist to defend your rights as you defend our lives. That is the least we can do. So until next time, Godspeed and God bless. If Again, please, if you haven't subscribed to Restricted Republic, please get over there. If you haven't joined us on Telegram and all the other platforms so that we can reach you, just go through the link, subscribe quickly to each one. That way we know no matter what happens, we can continue to get this message across because they don't want information put in this format to be made this simple, to shine a light on the deception and evils that they perpetrate upon the American public every day. But we will not stop. We will not relent out of respect for this great republic. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out. A few years ago, a couple years ago, I guess it must be longer than that now when Trump was new president. Oh, did I say his name? Did I say his name? Did I say his name?